happens if we take this panel and all? What happens if we take this panel and all? Mm. Praise Jesus. It's more wood, real wood, not paneling. Why on earth would you put paneling on top of real wood? This is one of those fixer upper, exciting adrenaline rush moments. It's real wood under there. y'all it's me and CIO and you're watching another episode of this whole shack let me just tell y'all I'm side of the road queen I found some tongue and groove on the side of the road and some like cabinet door things with some hardware and y'all let's take that to the new house and take a look y'all it just feels so good to be back in the house after the weekend this is my birthday weekend and the kids were home so when the kids are home especially little Zinnia you know it's easier to just kind of focus on family time, especially celebrating my birthday. And then, you know, this is kind of my weekday job coming to the Fixer Upper. And I just cannot express to y'all the joy that pops out of my heart every time I enter this house. Like, my cup runneth over. Like, I feel almost like I'm going to cry coming to the house after I've been away for a weekend. Um, I really bonded with it. I really love it. Built in 1929, we bought it for 20,000 as an extreme fixer upper. But after having this house for a month or two, it really doesn't seem like an extreme fixer upper anymore. It just feels like a fixer upper now. You know, I cannot express to you when you are out searching for your own fixer upper, you have to have the imagination. Okay, yes, get a home inspection. And so like this house doesn't have electricity or plumbing um, and it was as is. Um, so the home inspection wasn't, it didn't go down like your regular home inspection for a house that's like ready to go. And my home inspector actually called it a consultation. You know, they can't go through and do every tiny checklist of a home inspection when there's no plumbing. They can't inspect it. When there's no electricity, they can't expect that. But they can go through and inspect the bones and this and that and the other. So yes, get a home inspection. B, try to find a house that's a little bit dry. You know, water's not pouring in from the top or coming up from the bottom in the basement. A little bit dry, get a home inspection, and look beyond the garbage. You have to have imagination and look beyond the garbage. When this house was full of old mattresses and couches and garbage, it smelled bad, it looked bad, and I definitely labeled it an extreme fixer upper because it was a situation up in here. But in just a couple of months, this house has come so far, I can't even tell you. It's, this house inspires me and I hope it inspires you too. All right, let's start by seeing what I picked up off the curb today. Free, free, free. Okay, so um, first I start with a tip on curb, garbage diving. People put things on the curb to get picked up. So, particularly in Lynchburg City, the city trash will pick stuff, stuff up off the curb with a claw. So, a lot of stuff gets put out on the curb. So, in rich neighborhoods, you're going to find good stuff. But you're going to find more stuff in poor neighborhoods. Because the way poverty works and the way scarcity works on the mind is a large hoarding of a lot of low worth possessions usually. And there's also a transient element to the lower income neighborhoods where people get evicted and all of their stuff gets put on the curb. People move frequently and leave stuff behind. So you will find more stuff and sometimes real good stuff in kind of badder neighborhoods. And then you'll find real high quality stuff in the good neighborhoods. I was in a good neighborhood this morning. Anyway, so my porch needs tongue and groove for a piece of it. Now, I don't know if this is gonna fit, but it's certainly worth picking up for free, okay? I mean, God, this wood is new. <laughs> this ain't no 100-year-old stuff. This was bought newer. Um, so, tongue and groove. One, two, three, four, tongue and groove. I'm gonna see if I can patch anything with that. Um, and then 
I, you know, best use of my time today might be to go back to that pile and pick more. All right, so this one's got hardware on it. Perfectly good hardware. Here I got some hinges. Here I got some hinges. This is heavy, perfect, good wood. And then what made me pick this up really was this little knob um, because it's cute. Um, cute hardware is important in your house. You know, that's gonna go a long way in this house is light fixtures and cute hardware. Um, so there we go. Um, and you know, something like the hinge, I can unscrew and kind of store in my little hardware jar. And if I use it or don't use it, it's not taking up much real estate in my life. Um, so, you know, me keeping a jar of random hardware can save me money in the future. Um, it's all about balance of like how much space does it take up in your life? Literally how much space. And then after I, this is another just like cabinet piece or something. I just picked that up. The main thing was this with the hinges and the doorknob cabinet knob and the tongue engraving and I just threw this in the car because why not and I might go get some more of this why not pieces and I think there's it was kind of a large pile of wood kind of heavy um so there might be some other stuff under there um but I definitely wanted to get these things and see if I could do something with it So here we are in the bathroom. I showed y'all at the Habitat Restore, you can get medicine cabinets that are more appropriate for this time period for $5. But honestly, this is one of the cleaner things in the house. And I didn't have to mess with screwing things on and off the wall. I might could, you know, maybe just keep this guy. But look at this. What do we think? This and some paint. Let's throw some paint on here, see what happens. Now, am I saying I'm gonna keep this medicine cabinet? No, I ain't saying that. Am I saying today I feel like messing with the medicine cabinet? Yeah, I feel like messing with it. This is this, not even wood. This is like a sticker on top of something that looks like wood. When I woke up this morning, I really was not remotely thinking I was gonna go into the bathroom at the Fixer Upper today. This is a pure product of me finding a knob for the medicine cabinet on the side of the road. Anyway, we don't have plumbing, we don't have water, and I feel like I can feel, smell the sewer rising up out of the toilet. I'm gonna put a trash bag over top of it and a spray. You know, I got a plumber says he's gonna call me to arrange something for later this week, which ah, won't that be nice. Tell you right now, I want a brand new toilet. You all know I don't like new things, but I want a brand new toilet that no one has ever sat on ever before. I want a brand new toilet. That's that's on the wish list. Now that we done got started on this here bathroom, 
This is the door to the bathroom, one of these cheapy, cheapy doors. And y'all, it ain't even screwed in at the hinges. I think it's nails. Yeah, that's nails. So this door is gonna go to the dump. Next time we do a truck day. Mm. Don't have to worry about hurting this door. Y'all, he screws for most things. When it's nothing but a bunch of nails, that's more old timey or raggedy. Raggedy making do. I like to make do, but not raggedy. Don't follow me, door. There we go. Put our pretty little bathroom knob on. See how that looks. Changing hardware is something anyone can do. I'm a little bit of a handy person, but if you're not anybody, a child can change hardware. Great way to make your house look, oh, so much cuter. Y'all, now I'm going for an eclectic farmhouse, wide and fresh. This is fine. This is better. So this upper panel, this is like bathroom panel and water resistant stuff. This pattern is on the material. So this is gonna be wallpaper. This tile, unless it has to be busted out for some reason with plumbing, re-enamel. Put the enamel over the tile, the grout, everything. And then of course, re-enamel the tub. Re-enamel just over the whole tile, re-enamel the tub. Now, ceramic tile is on my wish list for this floor, and I might be needing a carpenter to sure up this corner. So, it's coming. All is coming if you work hard and you believe, and that's in anything. All is coming if you work hard and you believe. All right, so right here adjacent to the bathroom is the upstairs bedroom, and we're in the nice hall right here. So, over here, We got a good door. We got a very good, probably original door here. Um, the doorknob sucks. So this doorknob, that's gonna go. But this door, that's gonna stay. Now y'all know I just carry on and on, but I have a partner in this project. So if at any point he's like, whoa, Nelly, Azalea, I don't know about your plan, let us talk about it, then I'll talk with him about it. But in the meantime, I just gotta get big amounts of work done. And he's getting big amounts of work done outside. So like, he took me on a little walk through outside. He's going willy nilly. And was like, let's look at the trees. Which ones do we want cut down? Which ones do we want to stay? Something big and irreversible. So we went over and I told him how I felt about the trees. Anyway, so partnership is complicated. 
Teamwork and partnership is a skill I am not learning until I entered into this partnership with John over the past couple of years. Um, group projects don't agree with me. John's probably, John and my children are about the only people I can work with on earth. I'm not good at working with others. All right, so I got here a little tool. This is mostly for like getting paint off of like glass windows, I think. You know, I'm, no, <laughs> I'm a beginner. Anyway, I'm gonna use this to get some of these, scrape some of this peeling up paint. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to look clean and fresh and on purpose. Before y'all start hollering in the comment section about lead paint, let me have a talk with you because I know something on the subject. So, my children have always, always lived in old houses. We've never been in a new build. Lead paint was the paint once upon a time. If you have an old house, yes, it's going to be lead paint. Hopefully, it's under layers of paint that's been painted on properly not some peely mess situation. Anyway, so pediatrician, the pediatricians I had back when I lived in Richmond, Virginia, test the babies. Like you say when your house was built and they test the babies for lead. And y'all, Zinnia, when she was a baby, tested positive for lead, from lead paint. And let me tell you, I had a heart attack. When I was a new mom, when I got married the first time, for most of my life, I was real green. I was real green when I gave birth to my children. And I was like, oh my God, lead paint. Now, it is a little bit of a touchy subject. Zinnia has ended up having some disabilities. But, you know, according to the doctors, it's not the lead paint, but you wonder. So, this is the problem. When she was a baby, I did not know there was lead paint. Lead paint on the top layer all in through our house. So, you know, the pediatrician was like, calm down, go to Lowe's, get you a lead paint taster, go to the paint and test it. And it was just, yeah. Our house had not been painted over since lead paint era. It was just everywhere. And so we had to paint the house. That's what you do. You paint over it and then you're fine. Um, so right now I got a mess of lead paint over here. I know I did. Um, but that's fine. I'm going to go home. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to sleep up. I'm going to mop and I'm going to paint over. Like, I don't think lead paint is its top layer, but with the chipping, I'm getting down to old layers that are definitely lead paint. Um, so I wash it up. I mop it up. I don't have no toddlers in here with me while I'm doing this. Putting things in their mouth. That's the problem. Putting things in your mouth. Anyway, so Stopping this from a perpetual chipping situation where it will perpetually fall on the floor. Babies walk on it. Babies put hands in mouth. Uh, yeah, so we're going to peel it off. We're going to paint over top of it. It's going to be fine. But that's my two cents on lead paint. Test your home for lead paint. If you find it, paint over it. When you're chipping it, don't have no children around. You see this? This is nicotine running down. This is another reason I'm using Kills primer on this house is because it's a nicotine house. When you smoke in the house, it coats the walls. 
in yellow nastiness. Now imagine your lungs, y'all smokers out there. Y'all better quit. Y'all know what some real important tools are for fixing up a house? A broom and a dustpan. I'm going to have to wait to get it all the way out because I don't have one of these star screwdrivers. But this door is coming. So I done got this door this far, but I do, I'm not ready to put some primer on here. This is so scarred up from the peeling, which is from the fog of a shower or a bath next door in the bathroom with no blower. Anyway, so... This is so kind of scarred up that I'm gonna go back over it to make it smoother with peeling or I'm gonna try and do some kind of patch. That just needs smooth out. That needs smooth out a little bit. It don't have to be perfect, but it looks like someone, even though it's peeling from the paint, it looks like someone went at it with a knife, which is this sort of crazy thing that happens in low-end rentals. So at least a wasp nest down off the ceiling in here. Aren't they pretty? I love me a bit of nature. I love to feel the papery wrapping of the wasp nest. Marvel at the construction. Take time to enjoy miracles. I am starting to think on this closet. Um, first of all, with a house built in this time period, praise the Lord there is a closet at all. That's my first thought. Second thought is, is I love the shelves. They're solid good wood. I love the pole, solid good pole. I love the way this little closet is constructed. I love the design. I like this closet. I like it a lot. Um, just because this house was smoked in and let sit for a million years and people who didn't clean good lived here and then it sat, you know, mold, mildew, yuckiness. I found a dead bird in here. Um, you know, I do want to get a coat of kills on everything. So, I'm going to paint over the wood. I'm going to paint over everything. Uh, but, you know, this is one of these, like, kind of small contained projects. And, you know, I don't see us running any electricity in here. I don't see any reason pipes would go through here. I could probably get started on this, you know, Maybe doing some experimenting, getting my feet wet on plaster repair, pulling down the paper. I'm starting to think on this closet. You know, it's got these clothes hangers, but I like all my clothes hangers to match each other. And I just don't think I'm ever, no matter how much I wash these, and would get over the fact that they were in the house while it was sitting nasty. And then I'd be scared that the children's clothes or my clothes would be getting nasty vibes into them so I'm gonna throw those away but yeah I'm starting to think about this bedroom closet remove this old smoke detector yeah I actually got new smoke detectors and a fire extinguisher from my parents for my birthday present yesterday it is appreciated Voila, another more of a clean finish, clean slate space in this old house. Now, last week, after I'd wrapped up all the videos I was going to post, I did go ahead and prime and my little, you call this a bay window? Anyway, I primed up my window seat, so that's nice and clean and fresh here in the living room. I'll show y'all that footage.
happens if we take this panel and all? What happens if we take this panel and all? Let's just, let's just, let's just try it. Ain't much holding it up here. Is it glued? Oh, I see a little attack. Jesus, it's more wood, real wood, not paneling. Why on earth would you put paneling on top of real wood? This is one of those fixer-upper, exciting adrenaline rush moments. It's real wood under there. Lord, y'all, what a high, what a high. Y'all, as long as I'm physically able and capable, I think I'm a fixer-upper for life. I'm a lifer here. After I finish this house, I'm gonna get me another one. Y'all, what a rush. When you uncut, <laughs> oh, it's wood. It's in a beautiful wood under there. Well, let's, let's clean it off. Oh, girl, you give some love, ain't you? Ooh, it's dirty under here. Oh, house, I love you. I can't believe this. All right, so there's a little crack here, which is great. It needed to be filled up. This is some nice crack filler, but I need to get this foam a little flatter and maybe put some like wood putty on top of it. I think for today, I might just get a little bit of it down smoother. This is just a primer, you know. This is not my grand reveal big finish job. I'm gonna have to, you know, if I get it down flat, then I can put some kind of a smoother filler on it.
I think that's about a wrap for this video. Getting a lot done. <sighs> she's coming. To, she's really, she's really coming to life, y'all. I love this project. I love it. Y'all, if you want to see more videos you can't see here on YouTube, do visit the Patreon. www.patreon.com slash waycrunchy if you want to look over there. Y'all, don't y'all forget, I wrote a book. Memoir of Millennial Motherhood. And I'm going to put um, a couple of slides here at the end of the video if you want to check out any of that. I love you guys. Bye.